the latest film in the Predator franchise, Prey, coming out this coming Friday, August 5th to Hulu. Should be coming out the theaters, but I get it. Uh, Predator has not traditionally done well. The franchise, that is, has not traditionally done well or amazingly in theaters. Yes, even though this is a series that we've had since the late 80s at this point, 87 was the debut of the original Predator that we're talking. Um, it still just hasn't performed the way that it really should. So with that, the choice is made to put the latest film, Prey, onto Hulu. Uh, and because of that, I thought it was a good idea to go back and look at the original Predator film and work our way throughout the franchise. Um, as you know, I've been doing that with the Alien franchise as well, too. We talked Alien 3. We talked Alien Resurrection. Uh, we actually have Alien Covenant coming up as well, too. And we're also going to look at Predator 2 and Predators as well. So it's an Alien and Predator summer. Not Aliens vs. Predator, because we're not going to get to those anytime soon. Because, uh, yeah, Requiem. But, uh... I wanted to go back and look at the original film and it's interesting because especially in the last like like the probably last five years or so I feel that we've looked at these Predator movies under a much different light um the most recent film prior to Prey which was called The Predator which was done by Shane Black who you might remember also uh also was one of the stars of the original Predator film as well too. So uh, he had edited up the most recent movie, The Predator. And what's kind of interesting about this franchise compared to a lot of the other ones is that each film absolutely is very independent of each other. There are like very small ties, like from Predator 1 all the way up to The Predator. Um, but large in part, it's very, very different compared to other like big sci-fi horror franchises like The Terminator or even Alien or anything like that. Like there's not that many ties compared to the, uh, these other franchises. Now, the original story uh, or the original film talks about a, uh, a group, a uh, military rescue team that's headed by Major Alan Dutch Schaefer, played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, that is heading into um, uh, headed into the jungle basically to go and rescue what they're told is a foreign cabinet minister and his aide uh, from a group of insurgents, group of rebels. But what they find out, what they get there is that they have been, uh, they've been misled that this is actually an attempt to stop a Soviet backed invasion. And that this team has been placed into far more danger than they could ever imagine. Now, right off the jump, the interesting thing about Predator is that we have to suspend a lot of our disbelief about this army team that's placed into this peril. We've seen movies before to where we have, you know, alpha characters uh, facing off against a monster that they have no idea how to deal with. And it always has to be some kind of monster because we have to remember uh, when you look at horror films and horror franchises, if you were to take these, these group of men and put them in like in a slasher, there's a good chance that uh, it would be over after like the first five, 10 minutes. That's not me being misogynistic or anything like that. It's just that we're very clearly trying to tell a very pointed story that for all the bravado, all the muscle, all the weapons for all of everything that you have, it means absolutely nothing when you're faced off or you're pitted against like the the universe's greatest hunter out there. And uh, that's really the catching point here of Predator. That's the whole reason why it's supposed to terrify us is that this this group of men who, you know, they're not afraid of like going going into wars and fighting gorillas and, you know, doing the nasty, dirty things that our government might need people to do from time to time. They're not afraid of doing anything like that and they're just not afraid. But the moment they come against this enemy who they have no idea how to deal with, that's when everything begins to break down and we find out that uh, this might as well be a slasher. It's a macho uh, a macho, very masculine kind of slasher is the way to look at Predator because that's really the way that the Predator works. The idea is that this alien being uh, hunts his prey. And over the course of this series, we get to learn more about why and motivations and things like that. But at least just from this one movie, all we're, we're just given very, very few glimpses. And that a lot of it's filled in by... Arnold Schwarzenegger and his team to give us the idea of what the Predator is doing and why this being is hunting all of them. And it's sport. 
that's the idea is that it is sport and what better prey to hunt um except for the world's greatest killers army men military men marines whatever green berets whatever you want to call them basically um what better sport out there is there because these are the great the best that the world has to offer and um, I found myself wondering after watching it uh, most recently because I don't go back to the first Predator a lot. I'm a huge Predator 2 fan. Um, I don't dislike the original Predator, but it's not one that I revisit a lot. But I found myself going back to it and actually being uh, uh, like far more interested in uh, what Dylan had been up to prior to this movie because... Uh, they make it clear that uh, Dylan, played by Carl Weathers, Arnold's old buddy, uh, that they've worked together uh, at a time before Dylan left the team and is now working for the CIA. And this was the first time that I watched this movie. And I was like, you know what? I'd actually want to see either one, Dylan run some of his CIA missions, or two, I want to see the old school missions back when Dylan was still on the team and Dutch and Dylan and all of them were running around, you know, shooting up gorillas and, and shit like that. Like, I want to see the, the shit they really got into. And granted, that's a movie that I'm interested in that would likely never, ever happen. For some reason, I was very, very interested in it. And I think specifically because um, it's set up very big that Dylan's betrayal of Dutch and the team, like, this isn't anything small. This is not, like, just a quick laughing matter. Like, they're in this business right now because Dylan called in a favor. And throughout the film, Arnold's like saying over and over, like things don't add up. Something about this isn't making sense. Like the evidence doesn't back up the explanation that Dylan's giving. And he knows something is off, but doesn't realize it until basically it's far too late. Because pretty much at that time, that's when the Predator starts to uh, take notice of Dutch's team and begin to wipe them out. And... The first Predator really is such an outlier against the rest of the movies because, and, and I know with a franchise, that's the way it works out is that the rules of the first one uh, get very much changed when you get to the second movie and so on. That's what happened with Alien to Aliens. That's what happened to Terminator to T2. Um, it's just, we can absolutely expect that. But Predator was a really, really strong push away from, uh, 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 from the rest of what the series tends to set up. I guess from the mere, uh, the, from the simple idea that this team didn't have to be there in the first place. You know, Predator 2 with Danny Glover, uh, with uh, uh, Harrigan, Hardigan's, Hardigan's uh, team, uh, you know, uh, uh, his squad, whatever you want to call them. Like the police are investigating a murder right where the Predator is hunting. He's hunting all these drug lords. So they're smack dab in the middle of it. There wasn't really a way for them to avoid it just by circumstance. They're investigating the same case that the Predator is doing all the murders in. And the third film, Predators, all of these dangerous mercenaries and killers and serial killers and soldiers all are abducted and transported to this hunting world for the Predators. And the Predator, the fourth film, we have a good Predator that shows up on Earth to help us because he knows or, they, or, or it knows that there are more Predators coming down and it wants to help the mount a defense. So... Predator is the only film to where I feel the characters ended up here completely by their own decision, by their own choice. They didn't have, uh, like, th this was something that they actively could have avoided. And I realize to the point of the movie, they have to go. But that's just interesting to me that uh, 2, 3, and 4 all are situations where our characters couldn't have avoided it at all. And the first film, they have to actively choose. And I kind of feel that's on purpose because, again... These characters, where whether it's uh, Dutch, whether it's Dylan, whether it's Bill Duke's Mac, or it's Jesse Ventura's uh, Cooper, or uh, yeah, you know it's Billy, <laughs> you know that fucking crazy ass Billy. Like these characters had to actively choose to go into this situation, and as they each start getting taken out one by one, we expected okay, which one of these guys is gonna be the one that's gonna actually take the predator down because. They kind of have the weapons. They should be equipped for it. But the problem is that it's not just about what you're holding. It's the skill as a hunter. And to see that these characters begin to become more and more terrified about uh, their surroundings. And as they start losing members more and more and more, uh, it really does amp up the horror to it. And there's phases in this movie. Um, that That's something that's very different from the rest of the franchise as well, too. The movie itself, it's 107 minutes, so it's a little bit over an hour and a half. 
and yet as you watch it you feel that there's a very a very very distinguishable points of the movie itself you know we have like the war movie literally the first part of the uh, the first like quarter of the film is this war movie with Arnold and company going through to the jungle and just completely like cleaning house at that point and it's a great movie then we move into like I guess what we would call like the slasher part of the film if you want to look at the first predator someone as being a slasher where it's hunting Arnold's team and taking them out one by one and that's absolutely terrifying because again it's a group of military men who should be okay to handle this, like handle this being, but they're so not well equipped for what's going on. Then we get to the third part of the movie when the team's all gone and it's basically just Arnold at this point with pretty much no weapons. He, he's making use of the jungle itself to help fight this predator. And that itself has definitely been a staple of the predator series is that eventually you got to get, you got to get to a point to where, yeah, you're kind of going uh, hand hand in hand, basically, because like the Predator has weapons. And if it was just a straight fight of the Predator with all their weapons versus humans with theirs, we'd lose that in most cases, in most scenarios, because they're all these laser beams and fucking like firing knives and, sh and shit like that, the way we're just not equipped to handle that. And Arnold is still the best, uh, the best like end end of movie fight against the predator in this entire series and i love that that it sets this height up because back in the 80s who was tougher than arnold schwarzenegger maybe sylvester stallone maybe sylvester stallone but he had his own shit going on he was rocky beating folks up so he's not really fighting aliens at the time but arnold's the guy and arnold is just at the end of his strength fighting this being and still still is not enough to like to take him out one-on-one -on -one. he has to get clever and set up all these traps and that is one of the smartest things about this is that um we're very much shown here uh uh by jim and john thomas who wrote this film we're shown that for all the bravado all the muscle in the world that's not enough to take on the greatest hunter uh, you know, any other film, you could bash your way out of this. You could knock somebody out. You're Arnold Schwarzenegger. You're automatically going to win the fight. That's not enough to take on this being. You have to actually outsmart it. And what makes it even scarier is the fact that it's not just the weapons. It's the technology as well, too, that the Predator is well-equipped to handle anything. The heat vision. The fact that most of these plans don't work out for this team because screw all the all the weapons the predator has the massive strength the fact that it's taller all this stuff about it the fact that it has a tactical advantage of being able to see these guys wherever they're at and until arnold realizes that yep i have to find a way to disguise myself to hide myself there's no beating this creature and that leads to some very entertaining and gruesome kills. And that's the thing about Predator is that it is gruesome. This is a hunter. And oftentimes when you see footage of real hunters out in the wild killing animals, it's not a pretty sight. And I think that's very much being pushed in this film is that the Predator is ruthless with the way that he's killing all of these, all of these soldiers and taking their spines and their skulls out as his trophy. And you know, it's disgusting and it's it, it, it's it's just gross to us, but that's kind of what we do to our animals when we go hunting now. So it's a very nice allegory for what goes on in real life. And the Predator at least has somewhat of, uh, of a sense of honor to it as well. Because remember, at a certain point, Anna, who's played by Ophelia uh, Carrillo, um, he manages to spare her because she doesn't have any weapons on her at the time. So... A uh, very, very poignant deci uh, decision here in this story to tell about this creature. And it's absolute power. I gotta kill a spider. The other thing of note that I feel uh, should be mentioned is that the majority of this film takes place during the daytime. And we've talked about on this show before about whether or not uh, horror in the daytime can be as effective. And I truly think it can because the whole idea is that when there's light out, you're safe, okay? Like someone's not going to kill you. They're not going to try to hunt you down if there's light shining on what they're doing. That scares them from doing what they were planning in the first place. And um, I, I love the fact that, again, 
we're already setting up that these are not the traditional victims in a horror film, that these guys would not be the ones who would typically be getting hunted. So you combine that with daytime, this should not be a scary film. This should not be something that's freaking out in the least bit. We think it's all gonna work out. And yet I think that sells even more how gruesome and terrible this is because realistically the rest of the predator series is very dark it, it really is most of the deaths in the re remaining entries in the series are happening in the day uh in the nighttime and so again one thing that uh, another thing that separates the uh, predator one or against the rest of the series there is the fact that these characters aren't even safe when they can see when they actually have the ability to see a little bit better it's still no assistance to them and I love that piece of storytelling that, again, where we should be safe, we're not safe. And with these guys who should be well equipped for the situation, they are so unprepared for everything that's going on. It's a fantastic tale to tell. Now, beyond that, what I will say is that um, I do kind of wish because Arnold's always talked about the fact that he's been willing to return to this series. Um, and we've seen him uh, return to like Terminator a number of times. He's come back and he's done uh, numerous Terminator sequels, whether it was for just a cameo or an actual role, but we just can't seem to get him back here in the Predator series. And we kind of got to follow up. If you ever played the popular 90s arcade game, Aliens vs. Predator, uh, Arnold's character was actually uh, mentioned in, or actually is a character in that game series. So we got a semi return, but there's been numerous times to where Arnold was supposed to show up and it just didn't happen. And I do wish we could have gotten him back because it would just be fun. And Arnold's fantastic regardless here. Uh, but with Prey coming out here this week in just a few days, um, and all reports saying that it's going back to what the original film did so well. It was the right idea for us to revisit this one. So it is free to watch on Hulu right now, which is great because Prey is going to be free on Hulu as well. So make sure you get over there and check it out and come back here in a few weeks when we're talking Predator 2 and Predators as well, folks. Hey everybody, I appreciate you checking out this video, whether it was a review, whether it was a new episode, whether it was an unboxing, an interview, or whatever else. I want to remind you, you can check out my separate reviews also on my YouTube page, and new full episodes go up every Wednesday night on YouTube at 8.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, and on your favorite podcasting platforms at 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, like, and share. My name is T, we've been talking scary movies. Stay scared.